Welcome to Journaling with Nature, the podcast for those who want to turn curiosity into wonder, a pencil sketch into a rabbit hole of discovery, a moment of stillness into a life full of joy. I'm your host, Bethan Burton. Let's open the pages of our nature journals and explore this world together. Hello, this is episode 44. So it is now the end of probably the biggest, most exhausting month of my entire life. Exhausting, but absolutely wonderful. I was going to stay up late to edit and get out a new episode of this podcast for you, but to be honest, I am just not able to manage a long editing session tonight. Instead, I'm going to chat with you about this month and why it has been so full and so special. And then next week, I promise we'll get back on track with interviews. (laughs) So the month started out with International Nature Journaling Week, which was June 1st to the 7th. And I can't tell you what an amazing joy this week was. We had two classes every day and we had the website full of resources and different, uh, different things that you could play with, ideas and inspiration. And the community, the level of community and sharing was just so mind-blowing. It it really exceeded my expectations and we had people joining in from all across the world. We had lots and lots of participants from India, which was so wonderful. And there was just a real sense of sharing and camaraderie and support, real support. And I loved how each of the classes felt like there wasn't a division between the presenter and the participants. It really felt like it was just a chance to all be together and share ideas and explore feelings, especially. It was very rich in explorations of the heart, which I am always grateful for. I did a workshop on mindful nature journaling and it was such a joy for me to feel connected to each of the participants in that workshop and to share my story. I was actually really nervous in the beginning of the workshop because I knew it was about sharing my story and my personal history and struggles and I talked a lot about how I came to nature journaling and the personal nature of that story made me a little nervous but when I when I started speaking, it um, it felt really natural and safe and I got some great feedback from that workshop and I was really happy. I was really happy to share that moment because mindful nature journaling is something that I feel really strongly about. It's helped me incredibly through difficult times in my life and it was great fun to just be there together and just share a really quiet mindful moment. I really enjoyed it. So International Nature Journaling Week was an absolute whirlwind. I had a lot to do and had a lot of late nights. And then straight away after that, I was preparing for another workshop, which was in fact for um, something called the EE Forward Summit. And it was created by Tanya Marion from Talaterra. And if you don't know Tanya's work, she is in this domain of sharing the stories of freelance environmental educators and bringing professional freelance environmental educators together to network and to share ideas. And she created this amazing summit and it was all about the theme of water. And so for that summit, I was doing a nature journaling workshop all about journaling water in a mangrove habitat and so I shared a video of this mangrove habitat which is near me and I took the participants through a sensory exploration of water in that habitat through a nature journal and it was again so much fun and wonderful to share with professionals in my field and just a great experience. I'm going to leave a link to Talaterra in the show notes for this episode. So if you are a freelance environmental educator who would like to connect with others, you can follow that link. So after that experience, 
it was straight on to preparing for the Wild Wonder Nature Journaling Teachers Conference, which was next up. And I was asked to teach two, um, teach at two breakout sessions. They weren't long sessions, they were 45 minutes, but I was teaching on nature journaling with children of different ages. And in fact, I've had a lot of experience of teaching children in the very young age groups. So I have nature journaled with kindergarten groups, with groups of very, very young children. And that looks very different from when I'm teaching children uh, in the primary years or teenagers. Each of these groups have their distinct needs. And I was talking about that in my breakout sessions. That was really, really fun. Again, it was just such a joy to be asked to teach there and to share my experiences with others and in fact because the sessions were so short someone one of the participants asked if I could present the information again later to go further into the topic because it was too short to cover everything and it gave me the idea to present this information as a podcast episode which I'll do sometime really soon so thank you Connie for your encouragement to go further with this discussion and I will let you know when the podcast episode comes out. There's so much to learn and I love that there has been so many opportunities this month to learn and to share and to grow professionally and to connect, to connect with others. And so the next thing after that was the Wild Wonder Nature Journaling Conference itself. And wow, my goodness, the organizers of this conference have just done such a good job. It's a fantastic conference and they brought together a whole range of different people with different experiences and there was a chance to learn things that I had never even thought about and so I'm really grateful for that and I'm really grateful to have had the opportunity to present my own workshop at this conference and my workshop was called sky scapitos mastering cloud shapes and sky colors and i called it sky scapitos because it's a play on words for a play on words and so uh you might know that john muir laws uses the word landscapitos which means little landscapes that you can quickly capture and put in your journal without worry without stress and so I thought that it would be fun to do skyscapitos because skyscapes are something that maybe we don't often include in our nature journals and there are so many wonderful reasons to include skies. And so we talked about cloud types and about mixing sky colors and it was so much fun. There was one thing that came out of it for me, a learning point, which was that I got a lot of feedback saying it was too quick, that I was going too quick. And so I I know that I was rushing because I wanted to teach about a whole range of different things, different techniques for capturing skies in the Nature Journal. And so I guess I was rushing too much to fit too much in. So this feedback was really positive because I... I will know for next time to do fewer things in more depth and and that was a good learning experience for me. I wasn't able to attend all the workshops for the conference because of the time difference and because I have a little person to look after and I was busy with him and so I have a whole lot of recorded workshops waiting for me and I'm excited to dive into them. There is so much learning to be done and it's waiting there for me and I'm really looking forward to to starting that in the next few days. I want to say that these resources are there for you as well if you missed some or all of them. All the workshops for International Nature Journaling Week are there on the website so you can visit the website naturejournalingweek.com and watch all the recordings. I missed some of them because they were in the middle of my night time so I'm looking forward to going back to them too. And if you missed the Wild Wonder Conference you can sign up for a video pass which is a ticket where you can watch all the presentations 
as a recording. And so this is a wonderful way to access that wealth of amazingness <laughs> if you missed it. So now the month is over. I can't believe it. Do you know that feeling when you start a period of busyness and you look at your calendar and you just think, how am I going to get through? <laughs> how am I going to, how is it possible to get through all this? And then you do the first thing and the second thing and the third thing and the fourth thing. And then each day goes by and you realize that you're actually getting through it. And then you arrive at the other side and it's done. And I feel like that right now. I feel like exhausted and elated at the same time. Is that possible? <laughs> so yeah, I feel inspired and also like I need a week of sleep. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a few days, rest, rest in nature as well do a little bit of nature time because there's been a lot of screen time getting all this done and presenting online. So some nature time, some rest, and then back to it. I've got some really, really exciting guests lined up for July, and I can't wait to share more about that with you. And yeah, thank you for your patience. Thank you for allowing me this one little chat episode and I can go to bed now <laughs> thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next week 